Hello, everybody. My name is Kim Ross Hollinsworth, and I am the founder of the Arts and Authors Extravaganza and Book Builders Academy, where we teach new and current authors how to write, publish, and market their books. Also, I provide a platform for authors and artists to showcase and sell their work. And um, actually, our event is every August, the third week in August, which is going to be August 20th. And it's going to be at the Double Tree in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, the information uh, for you to register will be at the bottom of this post. But um, tonight, we actually have our podcast, Arts and Authors Talk, where we get to learn a little bit more about the authors and artists that either grace the stage of the Arts and Authors Extravaganza or that I've come in contact with. And tonight, we have a special guest. Her name is Elena Torciello. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I'm going to bring her on right now so that she can introduce herself. Elena? Hello. Elena? Hi, everybody. Hi. How's everybody? And everybody, this is a little bit. I know, right? I was letting everyone know this is this show is going to be a little bit different tonight because of the fact that uh, we were having little technical difficulties trying to get you on, but we do hear your voice. We can hear your voice. So everyone Yay! forgive us for this, but Elena is here. Elena, can you please tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm originally from New Jersey, and that's where I met Kim. Yes. And I was at, I was at her uh, authors and arts extravaganza. That's how we uh, we got that hooked was up there in 2011 or 12. Yes, 11. Can you believe that? Oh, my I can't goodness. believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can. Time so fast. Oh my goodness. Yes, it does. Now, so when, anyway, you came, when you came to the sh uh, to the event that day, you were just an artist, weren't you? No, I was an author. You was an author. Yes, I was an author. Yes, of the children of the now, children. How many book. books do you have now? Well, I have this book, okay, mm -hmm. and I'm mm -hmm. working on another one called uh, "So Blessed to Eat What You Can What You Want." Mm -hmm. And I am also finished with another book that I'm going to be publishing called Let's Make a Deal at the Wheel. Oh. Because I, I used to sell cars. Uh huh. So what I do is I teach women specifically or men what to do from the time you decide to purchase that car until when you deliver that car. It's going to be wow. a manual. Yeah. Wow. That's the best deal. Mm hmm. That yeah. really is interesting. And I would like to know more about that too, even though I purchased a number of cars over my lifetime. But, um, you know, there's, I, I believe I may be purchasing another one uh, day soon. And I, so, yeah, you know, and I, well, I, not soon, but, you know. Yeah, but I, I, also, like I, more I, also, I, also, I also consult people. Really? And tell oh, them what so to do before they go. Yeah. You never know. It yeah, could be some know. information that I don't know. Mm, that's true. Yeah, true. Yes. So, um, no. yes. So I met you. Okay. So um, I was a teacher for 33 years in New Jersey. And uh, I'm an author, an entrepreneur, a speaker, a teacher, you name it. I'm everything. <laughs> and now and, you're a, a, a paparazzi consultant as well. I'm a paparazzi consultant. That's right. I am a paparazzi consultant and I love my business. And I moved to Myrtle Beach, oh my goodness, almost four and a half years ago. Wow. So we're living here now and I'm retired, but I do lots of different things. So, yes. uh, and I, I, you know, so, and I've been on podcasts, I've been on local TV. So, yeah, I mean, I just like to get the word out there, whatever, you know, whatever we're doing as authors, we need to get the word out there. Exactly. Because everybody's got, everybody's got a book inside. I believe it. And they got to tell their story and get it out there to help other people. So that's the truth. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this book that you have, uh, the one that you sent me, 
Mm-hmm. What is the name of that book? And and tell us a little bit about that one. Okay, so this book is uh, Willie Villy meets Casey Cramps in Spruville. Okay, and it's a book about celiac disease because I was diagnosed like 26 years ago mm-hmm. with celiac disease. Like I was always sick and nobody knew it was what the problem was. I went from one doctor to another doctor. And they said, oh, it's irritable bowel. Oh, stay away from acidic foods. Oh, Mm -hmm. take a tranquilizer. Oh, nobody knew what was going on. I went to all these doctors. Nobody knew what was going on. And finally, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to find out. I'm going to be proactive. And I'm going to figure this out. So I was reading in my Mayo Clinic book about malabsorption syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because I'm only 80 pounds. I don't gain any weight. And there had to be a reason why I would eat and eat and eat and be hungry all the time and never gain any weight. Right. So I told the doctor, uh, could I have malabsorption syndrome? And they went ahead and they tested me with a blood test. And mm-hmm. I went to Cancun and had a great time. And when I came back, I found out that I had celiac disease. Wow. And what they said to me was, you have to go. I said, well, that's okay. So what do I have to do? You know, I'll take care of it. If God gave me that, then I have to deal with it. Right. That's right. So I said, well, so what do I have to do? And they said, you have to go on a little diet. No, this is not a little, (laughs) this is not a little diet. I thought a little diet, I could do that, you know, because I was starting to eliminate all these foods. I would eat pasta. I didn't feel good. I would eliminate the sauce. I would eat peanut butter. I figured, oh, it's the peanut butter that's bothering me. Never did I think it was the bread. Do you Mm. see what I mean? And so I had to figure that out. And I would come home sick from school and my husband would say, what do you want to eat? Oh, I want to eat butter, pasta, and milk. All the things Mm. that I couldn't have. Right, right. Because because knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Knowledge is power. So So, mm -hmm. go ahead. So they go ahead and they diagnose me uh, mm. and I and I had to mourn all the food that I used to eat. You know how we go through a, a period of mourning and I mourned all the food that I used to eat. And I said, you know what, God, if this is what I got to do to live, then this is what right. I got to do. And I mourned all the food. It's very it's a psychological. It's very emotional. It's physical. There's a lot of different components to this disease. Mm-hmm. But I mourned all the food and said, it's all poison to my body. I'm never going to eat it again. And then I started to learn how to cope with it. Right. And now, 26 years later, I'm actually helping people. So six years. Yeah, yeah. because when you told me about it, I never knew. I, I, I still didn't understand what it was. Right, and, right. You know, until you mentioned it. So is it a common disease or is it just, you know... Okay, so it is an auto, it's an autoimmune disorder, okay? Mm-hmm. And one out of 133 people are walking around with it. But wow. now it's been more diagnosed. Right. It, us- it usually took 11 years on the average to get diagnosed. Mm. Um, and it is definitely genetic. Okay, they found okay. two genes, okay, mm-hmm. that the people have. You can have one and be uh, was it predisposed to it. Right. Um, but it is definitely genetic. And there's a lot of different things. Like, for instance, you could have diarrhea. You have you can have constipation. You can have diarrhea and constipation. One mm-hmm. or the other. You can have flatulence. Um, you can have Charlie horses. Uh, you can have um, autoimmune disorders. That, like, for instance, wow. you can have uh, you could have a di- you could be diabetic and find out you're celiac or a mm. thyroid condition and you have celiac. Or right. you can have schizophrenia, multiple sclerosis, miscarriages, neurological wow. brain disorders. There's all these think different things because you're not getting nourishment. Right. Because what's happening is in your small intestines, you have these villi. And that's mm-hmm. why I named the book Willy Villy meets Casey Cramps and Screwville. <laughs> because yeah. you, have, you, have, you have these villi and all these villi absorb nutrients and minerals. You're like little brush-like projections. And wow. so they absorb all these nutrients and minerals in your stomach and your small intestine. And um, but when we have celiac disease, the gluten from the wheat, oats, barley or rye destroys and flattens out the surface. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we cannot absorb nutrients and minerals. And that's why I have severe osteoporosis right now. 
So, uh, you know, from right, not absorbing right. the vitamin folate, we can't absorb calcium. We can't absorb vitamin Bs. We can't absorb. And nobody should be in this di- on this diet unless they have celiac disease or an allergy to wheat. Because this right. is not something. Because we need those nutrients. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. yeah. So, I, so that's what, ha- that's, you know, so I, and my husband has been very, very supportive. He cooks for me gluten and dairy free because oh, wow. not only am I gluten free, mm-hmm. okay, I'm dairy free. I'm allergic to all cow dairy. I'm allergic to garlic. I'm allergic to caffeine. Oh, so, if any, yeah. So people say, what do you eat? <laughs> I was going to ask. <laughs> well, what I eat, I, I don't eat for flavor. I don't use anything okay. except Italian seasoning and lemon juice, right? Okay. But I eat to survive. Yes. Okay? I don't eat for all that, you know, I'm not looking for all that. I right. eat plain chicken. I cook it in water so I don't have the grease. I eat baked potatoes. I can eat them every day. I wow. eat plain, plain um, squash, like squash and carrots and, you know, things uh, like that, and asparagus and stuff. But I, I'm a very bland, plain eater. But, um, really? yeah, because, because I have stomach issues. I mean, I can be perfectly fine talking to you now, and maybe right. half an hour from you, I got a problem. Oh, wow. So, so you never the know. book that you have, you're educating us on – the diet and what what the uh, your diagnosis was like. Explain the book to us. Oh, okay. So I was a teacher for thirty three years. I was an ESL Spanish teacher, and I decided, wow, I got diagnosed at thirty some years old, wow. and said my whole life turned around in one day. Everything that I used to eat. In, to never eat a piece of birthday cake again? Oh, I know. Oh, or a goodness. pizza? I haven't eaten a pizza all that all these years. I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know what your spaghetti tastes mm. like. I don't know what any of that is. So I decided, mm. wow, if it's so difficult for me, Imagine. what about the kids? That's so true. What about the kids? And so I got I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna write a book and I'm gonna help these children learn about this diet. And I'm going to bless their parents because they'd have no idea what to do, probably. And right. so in the back of my book, I have tips for parents. OK, so, um, you know, I wish you could see me because I have my chef hat on and everything. I you know. know. I'm so <laughs> mad at that because I love that. When I saw you with your chef hat on, I, I love that. So, you know, uh, yeah, I so I, good too. I know. But you know what? What what we're here now? At least you're listening to me, right? So exactly. Listen, but the anyway, show must go on. It must go right. on. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I wrote the book and I said, you know what? I was supposed to meet with this lady about publishing the book. Now listen to this. Yes. And I was supposed to meet her the next day. All right. Listen. I had nothing written, like nothing. Okay. So I said to my husband, I got to meet this lady. And tomorrow I got to have something written. So I locked myself in the bedroom for two hours and I wrote my book in two hours. That's amazing. So, and then my friend, she's an artist. Well, she, she's never had one art lesson, but she illustrated the whole book. Right. Right. Yeah. I have the book in the car. You have the book. I wish I had it in front of me so I can show everyone. (laughs) Because it, it, you know, the cover is interesting. Yes, isn't it? So you it want me to really tell? Little, you want me tell a little bit about the book and what it's about? Please. Oh, I can't show the poster. I have a poster, but nobody can see anything. <laughs> can you read the back of the book for us? Oh yeah, I can read the back of the book. Yeah. Okay, so Casey Krabs is a six-year-old little boy who's newly diagnosed with celiac disease. He meets Willie Villy from a gluten-free planet, Spruton, who shows him that he just needs to make dietary changes to live a happy and healthy life. Their extraordinary adventure together allows Casey to understand more about his autoimmune disorder and to accept his lifetime dietary changes. 
Casey is no longer depressed about his gluten-free diet and looks at his new diet in a more positive and optimistic manner. So I wanted to make it fun. I wanted to make it educational, right? Mm -hmm. And so we put a lot, like a little fart bu bubble in there and, you know, a little humor, you know. Um, and um, yeah, and so, and then we put them in a spacecraft and then everybody's, you know, is, uh, they're all cooking gluten-free for him. Yeah. And and then just Chef Wee Wee, who I'm supposed to be tonight, and Chef Wee Wee is in there. And right. uh, so we make it. We make, and when we were in New Jersey, my right. partner, uh, we we were in LLC. We he, uh -huh. she used to do she used to do the pa face painting, and I would sign the books, and wow. I would be dressed as a chef. Right, right. So it, it was really cool. And we also worked with the uh, Celiac Association, uh, the the Children's Hospital in. Yes. Uh, Philadelphia, we did events there. Um, and I worked with us uh, beyondciliac.org. It's an unbelievable organization. Okay, I'm gonna write we, that here. Yes. Beyondciliac.org. If you want to know everything and anything about celiac disease, go to beyondciliac.org. Okay, spell and, celiac just in case I mess it up. <laughs> oh, C E. L I wait C E L I C L I A C. Okay, I think I spelled it right. L I A C C E L I A C. Yeah, but C see, don't talk. C E I A C. I got it. C E L I A C. Right. And so, what you need to know about that is they, if there's any research being done, Beyond Celiac is on it. They act, actually, it's a nonprofit, and they need money to do research. So donations are really awesome there. Um, but yeah, so I wrote the book and, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, I've done several events. I've done book signings. Mm -hmm. um, and then May is Celiac Awareness Month. Oh, really? Yes. So I've done, you know, I've, I've been in, uh, let's see, I've been in ShopRite doing book signings. Mm -hmm. I've been all over the place with the book signings. I've been at uh, different, uh, different events. And, uh, and it's really important that when you do get diagnosed, you don't know what your whole world is turned upside down. Right, so right. you want to make sure that you get hooked up with a support group. Exactly. I got hooked up with a support group and it was the best thing I ever did because you're thinking, Oh, I'm all by myself. And what am I going to do? And, right. and people get so depressed and like, I'm on like a lot of Facebook pages and I see people that are saying, I just got diagnosed. I am so upset. I'll yeah. never go out to eat again. <laughs> no. This is something that you can live with and live in a positive manner. But you have right. to know what you're doing. Exactly. Now, your book not only teaches young people, it also teaches the elders how to cope with it. Right. You right. know, and that's what I like about what you're doing. When you were like an educator, what, what was the age that you taught? Um, okay. What age? I, I lost you there for a couple seconds. seconds. Like, you said, okay. Like what age? You, oh, okay. So when you were an age, uh, an educator, like, was there mm -hmm. a certain uh, age limit or uh, age group that you taught or that you, uh, you know, were assisting with? Oh, I taught, um, I taught K through six. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Uh, so I also taught you relate when you wrote your book. Yes. I was teaching ESL K through, uh, K through six, then K through five. Uh, at other times I did, you know, teach high school and all that. But at that particular time when I wrote it, I was teaching elementary. Nice. And that, that was the fun part because I could go in and dress up like, you know, like Dr. Seuss day, right? Yeah. I would dress up as a wee wee chef wee wee and go read the book to the kids. Oh, yeah. So um, that's what I would do there. Well, that's but um, yeah, but you know, this is a very complex um, uh, disorder. And like I said, you may have other things and you know, you may have other things like diabetes or something and still having mm -hmm. symptoms and then you you don't know, but if you don't take care of this, it will do damage 
because mm. they it's what they call a, a silent killer. Right, right. You may, you may not have any gastro symptoms at all, but you may have other things going on in your life. So it's really important that you go and get a blood test. That's number one, the blood mm -hmm. test. It's called the T-tissue transglutamase. It's a blood test. Now, sometimes the blood test will be, uh, what do they call that? False positive or whatever it is. Sometimes right. the blood test will not indicate that you have celiac disease. Mm. But if you want the gold seal on celiac disease, then you want to get an endoscopy. You know, when they go down into the into the esophagus, yes. right? You want to get an endoscopy. That oh, wow. is going to tell you when that you definitely have celiac disease. So, so what will be the symptoms that someone would have if they, you know, wanted to go get these tests done? What would be some of the symptoms? Okay, some people have what they uh, some people have constipation all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which I did. I was, my mother told me that like when I was like a baby, I would scream from constipation. Mm. So you can have constipation or diarrhea or a lot of gas, a lot of flatulence. Your stomach can bloat up like you're almost pregnant. I mean, your stomach will bloat. Uh -huh. um, you will have a lot. Some people have Charlie horses. Um, you're going to get a lot of different, some people get headaches, migraine headaches. So if you got, oh, and a lot, and like I said, if you have like a lot of infertility issues mm. or you have, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, miscarriages, right? Mm -hmm. It could yeah. be related to that. And really? so you want to make sure that you're tested for celiac disease. If you suspect that you, because sometimes, like I said, you may have no gastro problems at all. Right, right. But if you have, oh, acid reflux is another one. Okay. So uh, if you have any of these things going on, you and you, you don't gain weight. Now, when I was a child, I wasn't thriving. Mm. See, if, let's say, for instance, you're not thriving, you're not gaining weight, right. and you're a little kid, you could possibly have celiac disease. Uh, they said sometimes projectile vomiting for kids. Oh, wow. Okay. So everybody's different, though. That's what I'm going to tell you, Ken. Right, exactly. Everybody is different with their symptoms. Like, I get violently ill if, say, I got glutened like within an hour. Okay. And I'm not talking about just being sick for two hours. Right. I'm talking about being sick for a week because mm. you have to slowly get yourself back to where you are. Right. You are, right. So that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's not, it's not an easy life, but you know, but I have learned to travel. I take okay. all, I take all my food on a carry on and nobody checks it in. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I take my pasta, my bread. I yes. take everything with me. Even when I go to St. Martin, I had it with me. You really? Know, I know what I'm doing. I know how to travel with this. I take so, a toast, a toaster everywhere I go. Wow. So yeah. you can eat bread, but as, as long as it doesn't have gluten in it. Yes. The bread gluten that I, free. Yeah. It's a very. And what about salads and veggies? Can you eat all, all veggies or. Yeah, yes. People can eat veggies. They can eat fruits. Okay. The gravies have to be made with no flour. They have to be made with cornstarch or okay. something else. Okay. I don't okay. drink any milk. So I use rice milk to make oh. my, to Jim, Jim makes my gravies with yes. rice milk. And you have to talk, this is really, really important in this book. I talk about cross contamination. Right. Okay. And when you go to a restaurant, you don't know what they're doing back there. No, not at all. So cross contamination would be me using your microwave without covering my food. Wow. Me using and your. That's something we wouldn't even think about. No. Me using your toaster. I can't use your toaster. So I have to have my own toaster. I have my own pots. Jim has his pots. We keep the sponges that we wash the dishes with are separate. The, yeah. the utensils are separate. Wow. And we even at one point had our own sinks. Wow. <laughs> so we have to keep it separate because cross-contamination will make you sick. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something. You never think that's, about that's, that. It, it was interesting when when uh, you mentioned, you know, the celiac disease. Uh, what is it? 
it's like a, it's not, a, is it a disease? Well, they call it a disease because a hundred years ago, there's this Dr. G, okay? And he's, his birthday is September 13th. So they call it Celiac Day, Awareness uh -huh. Day. And he, he found out about the wheat. That's how he was the one that brought it to oh. fruition. It was a hundred years ago. But wow. you were saying, now, what was the question that you were saying? So, now? so when you, I, I can't exactly, you know, like yeah. put this in words, but, um, you know, just knowing about it, you know, and, and getting educated about it, even if someone is going through symptoms like that, it's just good to just go and just mention it to your doctor. Just, you know, because yeah. you know how most doctors say, oh, well, they don't like people coming in and self-diagnosing themselves and all that kind of stuff. How would you present that to a doctor? How would you tell them, you know, I need to be, you know, have blood work, uh, you know, to find out if I have this, you know, disease? Like, how do you, you know, pose well, that I to would, a doctor? I would just say, you know, if you're going to a gastroenterologist, they're probably going to test you for it. If you're telling them you have constipation and bloating and acid reflux and and flatulence and all that, they're probably going to do that. But if you're going to go to your regular doctor, there are some doctors out there more now than ever. They are doing it. Okay. Oh, wow. But years ago, it was very, very difficult to, to get. Yeah. I mean, they put me on a tranquilizer, stomach trank. They told me not to eat certain foods. They mm -hmm. sent me to a psychiatrist. He said, what are what? you doing here? <laughs> well, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm trying to find this all out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you do not need to be here. I, he says, right. this is not, people think it was all in your head. Yes. All yes. in your head. And you know, my mom even said to me at one point, oh, you'll get tired of that diet. Yeah. What? I was like, no, this is. But not if you want to live, you're going you to stick to that diet. Right. You're going to stick to the diet. But it becomes easier. And easier. But I would definitely go to your doctor and say, listen, I'm having these symptoms and I there's a possibility that may, could I have celiac disease? Right. And can we get tested with the blood test? It's a mm. celiac panel. That's what they got to ask for. Mm. A celiac panel. Okay. Yes. Now, this is very interesting. You could be on a gluten-free diet and do everything right and mm -hmm. still be gluten. Do you want to know why? Why? Because you might be taking a medication that has gluten mm. in it. Mm. I have to check every antibiotic. If, for instance, if I go to the doctor on a Friday mm -hmm. and I can't get in touch with the pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. I can't take anything until I find out. A cough drop, medication over the counter, oh everything you have to call on. It's crazy. Everything you have to call on. And then they'll say to us, oh, well, we can't really certify that it's gluten free because we don't know the third party that the materials are coming from. All right. So then what do you do? Then you have to do something. But I don't take a lot of medications because I have stomach issues, right? Right. So I try not to take a lot of medications. So All what's right? the difference between that and Crohn's disease? Well, Crohn's disease is actually, uh, I think, a situation where um, you have an issue with your stomach. Like, in other words, it's a genetic, too. I think Crohn's disease is, too. Mm -hmm. But Crohn's disease is much, much more. Another, okay, I'll explain to you. Okay. As a celiac, I can control everything I eat, and I'm in control of how I feel. Okay? Right. I'm in control of how I feel depending on what I eat and what I do. Mm -hmm. All right, so if I feel horrible, then and I and I, I never cheat on my diet. But okay. if you cheat, you're going you're gonna to get the consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, Crohn's disease, I think that's an actual situation where you don't really, I mean, you can have a diet and control mm -hmm. it, but I don't think you can control it just like this. Like, I don't take any injections. There's no cure right, for right. it. There's nothing like that. But Crohn's disease is, it also is much more diagnosed. In mm, yeah, it is. Exactly. Right. But people with Crohn's disease tell me they have to always know where a bathroom is. They always have right. to know what's going on. So they can't eat certain foods, right? You know, because they don't know if it's going to cause them to have to go to the bathroom, right? Just like colitis, right? Colitis and all that, yeah. You know? But you know, celiac disease is definitely 
aggravated by stress too. Oh, so you want to always? I keep think it most of it is, though. Tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's that's gastro has mm -hmm. a lot to do. You, you know, your your mind controls your stomach, right? Yeah, and other yep. parts of your body. Yes. It so does. yeah. So um, but it, it's not it really easy. Is interesting. It's not easy living with it, but you can live a positive life. I'm very positive about it because what am I supposed to do? I can't sit there and say, oh, I can't eat this. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't. No, you can't do that. And people get depressed. Now, depression is also something that you can look at. If you're depressed, you could have be celiac too. Oh, really? So, yeah. So you want to educate yourself as much as possible. Yes. With about celiac disease. And there are books out there that you can, Dr. Peter Green, he's the yes. guru of celiac disease at uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's the guru there. So he's one of the doctors um, that does a lot of research and things like that uh, with okay. uh, celiac disease. And then there's another center in Chicago. So you have to just really, Really, really become like, okay, since this is what I have, then I need to know everything about it exactly. as well. Because I did the same thing when I found out that I had a thyroid uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Every single thing I try to read up on, I try to know exactly what to do, what foods to eat, you know, what I can't what? eat, you know, because, you know, I love broccoli. And mm -hmm. I heard that that gives you a flare up. Like, right, right. I'm like, what? So it is very, very, very important whenever you find out something or you get diagnosed with something to definitely find out everything there is to know about it. Yeah, so like, you're absolutely right. Right. I but can't eat broccoli. I can't eat cauliflower. Really? I can't eat oh no, because I don't eat any. I eat, I basically eat potatoes. I love zucchini. Now you said potatoes. Now, is it? that a form of like gluten? No, no. Potatoes are starch. Oh, it is a starch. Okay. Yeah, so gluten is going to be, now let's say this, let's say that the potatoes are French fries. Yes. In a restaurant that yes. has, could possibly have gluten in them. Exactly. Because they're fried in a fryer with onion rings. Got it. So you, so you can't even eat and at fast food restaurants or anything like that, because you just don't know. No, I haven't eaten in a fast food restaurant in 25 to 26 years. That's amazing. But I will tell you, I'm what, 65 years old. I don't take any medications. Oh, well, then that's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's a blessing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so this diet has really, like, I don't even know, like if I, if there was a cure tomorrow, I mean, mm -hmm. I would be happy because I would, I would definitely try to eat some pizza. You know what I mean? I bet you would. <laughs> <laughs> or some carrot cake, you know, or something like that. Oh, yeah. Because our cakes are very dry. Yes. Our, our, our cakes are very, very dry, you know. Um, but if there was like a cure tomorrow, I don't know if I would go back to like. Really? I mean, it's, a, it's a healthy diet. It's it sounds extreme, like it. It's an extremely healthy diet. But extremely expensive it sounds expensive well any diets are expensive right but I tried to do so many the south beach diet the weight watch it's all expensive <laughs> but here's what i'm going to tell you my bread that i use that i i eat okay mm -hmm. it's frozen all my bread is frozen okay wow. it went from 5.99 to 6.49 to 7.49 a loaf i'm paying That's seven crazy. Okay, I should be baking breads. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know, like, like seven. I buy two loaves of bread at sixteen dollars. What? That is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, that it can get expensive. I know it can. I know. So, but but, but at least you look good. <laughs> <laughs> well, if nobody, anybody listen, go on to Elena's page. You will see she looks. Amazing, amazing. So the oh. diet is working, <laughs> but yes, but that is really, really now. So you have that one book, and you're mm -hmm. in the process of writing the other one. 
Yes. And um, when is that book uh, going to be released? Well, I don't like, uh, well, the car buying book is all done. We got to, that's going to be going, coming out soon. Once I get that together. Okay. Um, the okay. other book I started writing in three chapters. The one chapter mm -hmm. is all about being angry about it. You know what I mean? Like, you know how you feel yeah. when you first get diagnosed with something and then, you know, like yeah. your whole life changes and well, your you're like, yes, you know, the emotional side of it, the physical side of it, you know, people don't really and nobody understands this until you are in the situation that's so true you know and everybody's and like i said everybody's got that story but my mission my mission is to educate as many people about mm -hmm. celiac disease as possible yes. all as you know because that's what we want to do we want to get the word out there exactly. you know and like i said if uh if we get a lot of people out there then and we're going to save a lot of people from a lot of suffering if they know, can you imagine all these years I tried to figure out what was wrong with me and nobody, mm -hmm. and my mother, she would like, she go like this. Well, she said, why are you on vacation? You're on vacation. And why would you get sick? You're not stressed. No, but I was eating waffles for breakfast, pancakes. Eating the wrong foods. I was eating all the wrong foods. Right. So once you get yourself educated about anything, mm -hmm. You're going to be in control of it, hopefully. Do you exactly. know what I mean? Like the way you feel. But yeah, so those are the books. I'm the, the next book is, and this is so incredible because I'm going to tell you how I got the idea for the book. Okay. I was sitting in Costco, right? And there was mm -hmm. a man and a woman and they were eating an ice cream cone. Now, remember, I can't right. have any dairy, right? They're eating their <laughs> ice cream. I think that, I think it was in a like a, like a little dish, you know? Yeah. I said to myself, I said to myself, how <laughs> blessed are they to eat what they want to eat? Like, seriously? Yes. And I said, that, I said, oh, I'm going to write a book with that title. Yes. How blessed. It probably made you mad. It <laughs> made you angry at the fact that you can't enjoy some. So, yeah, right, like you sure. said, mixed emotions. Yeah, yeah. But you want to know something? I can now look at a whole buffet, which I do at like a wedding or wherever I'm going, I can look at the whole buffet and say, have a piece for me. Enjoy. <laughs> if I see the cake, have a piece for me. That's Enjoy. because you've, you've learned to live with it. You yeah. learn to accept the fact that you cannot eat, but you know what? I'm the type of person who, if I knew that it made me sick or mm -hmm. affected me in some kind of way negatively, mm -hmm. It wouldn't even bother me. I'll be like, whatever. I feel good. That's all that matters. Right. And that's it. That's the most important thing. You know, sometimes we have to sacrifice a lot in life. That's it. You know, who would ever think that I had celiac disease? I mean, mm -hmm. who would ever think that I'd never be able to, like, bread was bothering me, pasta was bothering me, sauces mm -hmm. were bothering me, pizza was bothering me, everything I ate. I was like, what? That's a beer? You know, we can't have any beer. Because uh, beer, <laughs> well, that has yeast in it, so yeah, but it, ha it know, also the yeast has, probably will get you right. But it has bottle. Well, we can't have well, they have gluten free beers, but I have never been a drinker. I drink water and lemon, that's it, okay. But you know, we would go to the pub, we would go to the pub when I was younger, and Jim would have, Oh, let's have some beer. I'm like, Oh, I'm so <laughs> sick afterwards. Oh my god, oh, you know, but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean. So that's why I basically wrote the book to help the kids. I and I wrote yes. the book to help to educate these everybody on celiac disease because, like I said, um, and I wanted to help the parents. Yes. So I can read. You want me to read just a couple things that I tell parents? Please, so, please do. Okay. It says, explain to your child that celiac disease requires him or her to be on a special gluten free diet for the rest of her mm -hmm. their lives. Emphasize what the child can eat. That's right. Instead of what he or she cannot eat. Exactly. Teach your child about celiac disease and how to live a happy, healthy, and positive life to the fullest. Have other children sample your children's gluten-free snacks so that your child can share his food and experience with others. Teach your child what foods he or she can eat in restaurants and parties. Mm. See, I bring my food to, the, to, uh, right. to uh, an event. I call the chef. Mm -hmm. I go to the restaurant and let me tell you something. 
sometimes they mess it up. Of course. So you want to know what I do? I bring the fish with me. I bring the baked potato with me. <laughs> People say to me when I go to their house to visit, wait, they say, do you want the paper plate? No, I brought it. Do you want the <laughs> what? No, I brought it. Do you want do you want your water? No, I brought it. I'm like, <laughs> like what? can we get you anything at all? I'm like, no, nope. I have all a table so I can sit down and eat. <laughs> it says remember that foods can become cross-contaminated, okay, uh, at restaurants and parties. And bring your own food to occasions or parties to avoid cross-contamination issues. That's make sure your make sure your foods are baked or broiled mm -hmm. instead of grilled because they don't clean the grill wow. that well. So you have to make sure when I go out, I just get a plain piece of broiled fish and a baked potato. I bring my own Italian seasoning, I bring my own bread or crackers, and um, I bring my own dessert because I don't know what they're gonna have. You know, and I just, but it never stops me from having fun. That's it. But that's your personality. If it, anybody uh, knows you personally, they know that it's your positive, like, at, like your spirit. So you learn to live with it. You have a pos positive attitude about it and you learn to cope with it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is what it is. I mean... And that's that's another book that you can write something about like um, as far as well you are writing it with people dealing with depression in in reference to it. Well, so, I'm, I mean, I'm writing I'm writing the book I'm writing the book about my you know my experience yes yeah so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking about my experience and living with this each and every day you know because sometimes I'm doing really really great okay mm -hmm. I'm feeling good I'm doing great and then I get a stomach attack mm -hmm. boom. I get a stomach attack and then I'm wiped out for a few days. I lose a couple pounds. I'm only 80 pounds. I don't need to be losing any weight. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and then I have to get back on the mend and have a little soup and, you know, and then get back on the mend. And then, and then the cycle starts again. So, okay. yeah. you know, and I had one doctor put his hands up in the air and say, I don't know what to do with you. Uh -oh. He's like, why don't you go to Duke and become an experiment or a research or something? What? I'm like, what? I'm out of here. Do you hear me? <laughs> God, I was like, unbelievable, no. unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It well, is. Well, well, I'm um, proud of you and your success with the books, and um, you know, I just, I, I just hope someone can get something out of this because there's probably a lot of people that's living with it that mm -hmm. don't know that they even have it. So right. you know, just by learning like the different symptoms. And maybe, you know, talk to their doctor and find out if they can be tested for it. Maybe this is something that they have and they don't even know. Yeah. And and also, if you go on beyondceliac.org, I told you about, there's yes. a symptoms checklist. A symptoms checklist. So mm -hmm. people can go on there and see if they have symptoms, you know, all the symptoms yes. or whatever. And then and they some, can of the, some of the symptoms that you even mentioned before. Or some symptoms of other things. <laughs> so they wouldn't know until they get a blood test. Right. Because what happens is we have antibodies in our body that some people don't have. Mm -hmm. So we have, and we have these antibodies. And so when they take the blood test, they're going to see if the antibodies are there and if they're elevated. Okay. Mm. Like I said, some people could be on this gluten-free diet, but they're getting other areas of cross-contamination, like I said, medications, right? Here's another thing. Here's another thing you will never think of. We can't lick stamps. Not that you want to, but anyway. Really? We can't, we should have tea bags, but the tea bags need to be stapled, not glued, because we don't know what is in there. Wow. So there are so many different avenues. That, that is a lot that we don't even think about. <laughs> yeah, that you don't think about, you know? And, um, you know, cover your food when you go and, and use a public micro, uh, microwave, put a paper towel or paper plate on it, you know, and, and just be aware. But some people like, you know, and that's why when I go on the Facebook pages and I see people asking questions, mm -hmm. I answer them. Yeah. I answer the questions for them 
because they are so overwhelmed with this. That's that right. It is just, you know, and we, and I've experienced it myself. So why not help other people? Right. So that's exactly. What you know what I mean? So because we wouldn't know we, you know, and someone who, you know, has gotten diagnosed with it, they wouldn't even know probably what to do. So hearing it from you and like seeing it in the books and, you know, doing their own research, maybe they could, you know, it can make things a lot easier. Absolutely. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm so glad you came on to the show just to make it a little bit easier because like I said, I didn't even know anything about it. I never heard of it, tell you the truth. Right. So, you know, just getting the word out, it, you know, and talking to different people about, you know, what you have and what you've experienced, it makes all the difference. Yeah, so I even, I'm I even took, happy. I even, took people, I even took people out to the supermarket and shopped with them because mm. they didn't know what to do. Like, for instance, okay, Hellman's mayonnaise is gluten free. But another it is. is not. Yes. It is? Yes. <laughs> yes. And so how does gluten taste? I mean, like, because I like Hellman's mayonnaise and I wouldn't have known that it was gluten free. Well, it says on it that it is gluten free. So now there's I more. Never more knew. Yeah, there's more and more. I have some in, in my kitchen right now. <laughs> Listen, you become so good at reading labels. And when I read things, I know what has gluten in it. For instance, wow. caramel coloring can have gluten. Natural flavors. What are natural flavors? We don't know what natural flavors are. Do they come from corn? Do they come from wheat? You see? So I'm constantly calling companies to find out if it's cross, if it's gluten-free. Wow. And then, you know, what's great about it? Then they give me free coupons, too. <laughs> so that's good, you know, but... You well, I'm going to try the bread next just to see how it tastes because I always, I see it in stores. I mm -hmm. see the gluten-free section, mm -hmm. but you know, I was thinking it's like, you, you like it's nasty or something. I don't know. Like well, I you, wouldn't like the taste. Okay. Let me tell you, do not eat it without toasting it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> You, it's gonna be sawdust, okay? You need to toast it. Sawdust. Listen, <laughs> you need to you need to bring. You have to toast it. I, whenever I go and have to make a sandwich to go, the bread is toasted, okay, every That's day. Wrong. So you need to toast that bread. Do not eat it the way. Well, if it tastes like Hellman's, I mean, my 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 Hellman's mayonnaise is the bomb. I like Hellman's. No, no. What I'm saying, what I never I'm saying, knew it was gluten free. Yeah. So you want to read the label. All right. But, you know, see what it is, is there's gluten in the bread, right? In the wheat. Okay. Oh, okay. So rice doesn't have gluten, right? Okay. So now I'm going to just tell you a little bit about some of the other um, uh, flours that you can use. Okay. Okay. So you have corn flour, potato starch. Garbanzo bean flour, uh -huh. almond flour. Like uh -huh. these are all the, listen, if it wasn't for celiac uh -huh. disease, if I, if it wasn't for celiac disease, I wouldn't have known you about all these other flowers. Yeah, you know I didn't saying? know that there was anything other than regular flour. Chickpea flour, lentil flour. Never heard of it. Yeah, and there's lentil pasta. Well, I'm allergic to lentils too. I'm allergic to a lot of things. Oh my goodness! But anyway, I'm I'm allergic to I'm allergic to salmon, cod, haddock. I mean, cherries, oranges, you know, all that stuff. Wow. Uh, bay leaves, uh, spearmint. Yeah. That's so I mean, something. it's crazy, right? Yeah. But, so you would definitely have to do your research, definitely, yeah, if you. Yeah were, you know, right. suffering from celiac disease. And you definitely have different flowers that you're going to have to use. And and the flowers cost a lot more money. That's why we're paying more for the for the wow. product. But That's remember now years ago, years ago nobody knew about celiac disease. They didn't know about the gluten-free diet. Now yeah. it's a fad. See, because of Hollywood got into it. You have like Gwyneth Paltrow and yeah. you have um, and you had uh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck. She was the first one 
Oh, really? Uh, we do, yeah. And um, all of that. And then now it's becoming a like $6 billion industry. Because mm. now, don't you see it everywhere? Gluten-free, gluten-free? Yeah, everywhere. But right. I thought it was something else. I didn't think it was, you know, I... I, I really didn't know what it was, to tell you the truth. I just saw that it was gluten-free. Everything was gluten-free. Right. So you can't eat anything that's wheat, oats, barley, or rye. Mm. Okay. So what I want to tell you is, I'm saying oats, but oats is not really... Okay. There's an issue with oats because if the wheat and the oats are in the same field and the wind blows together... That's cross-contamination. That's cross-contamination. <laughs> So you can't. So some people can't eat oats unless they come from a specific company. That's crazy. I know it's crazy, but it's I just too oats. much. Yeah, like, it's so just a lot. There's a lot to learn. Cooking is all different. Uh, baking is different. Uh, living is different. Yeah, you know, it's just a life changing diet. Yes. That affects the disease affects you emotionally and physically. Yeah. And I so that's it. what's that? And that's why like see, okay, when you get up in the morning, right? You just go ahead and eat what you want, right? Pretty much. Okay. No, I got if I'm going on a trip, I gotta have everything with me. I gotta have the cereal, the milk, the this. I mean, I can never leave the house without three days of packing. Okay, that's not going. Well, it's crazy. When we were evacuating, it took us a couple of days because we had to drive. Remember, I can't fly with all this stuff, right? Right. So right. I can drive somewhere. I can't drive with the pots and I fly with the pots and the pans and all that. So yeah. I got to drive. So I, I, when I come to New Jersey, I drive with all my things. That is something. Well, you know, hopefully, you can come in August. To the arts and authors extravaganza. Oh, that would be awesome. Because we're going to be there. Uh, we have people come, coming and flying in, driving in from everywhere. But we're going to be at the Double Tree. So you'll at least have a place to stay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, also, I'll have my books done by then, right? Yes. Hopefully, yes. yes. So. Well, I I know that there's well we're streaming on several different platforms. Mm -hmm. So if there's anyone who has a question or anything, I can't see everything right now. Plus, I don't have my specs on. <laughs> but if you have questions, Elena and I will be uh, able to answer those questions for you. If not now, at a later uh, time. Um, also, I just wanted everyone to know that uh, in two weeks, which is the twenty third. We will be having another author join us. Her name is Denise Coleman, author Denise Coleman. She has several books. I think she's almost up in the 20s now, if I'm not mistaken. But we will be uh, talking with her. And, um, you know, all the information to your books and uh, how they can purchase from you, Elena, will be uh, at the bottom of this uh, video. Um, yeah, they, they, they can, they can purchase at xlibras.com. Okay. Did you give me that website already? No, no, I didn't. Okay. Is, uh, oh, I don't know if you can see like the comment section, but I can don't... you put that in the comment section? Oh, yeah. I'll put, I'll put that where they can get it. Yes. Yes. And then your contact information too. Uh, so that if there's anyone who has questions for you in reference to, uh, celiac disease. Um, oh, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. You Amazon. know, talk to you about it and find out exactly what they can do. Sure. But I just want to thank you so much. We finally got a chance to talk after who years, years. I I'm know. So we had a chance. We'll get together again. You know. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, maybe I'll come to the August. That would be good if I can come. That to would that. be great. That would so be I'm great. Gonna I'm going to put my uh, email address here. If okay. anybody wants to email me, um, and then they can email me, and I can answer the questions. And they can also go on Elena. They can go see Elena Torciello on my Facebook page. Okay, and send me a message yes. on Messenger. Or whatever, but I have xlibras.com, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, books and mil books, 
Books a Million, it's called Books a Million. Yes. And so you can get it. You can get it at any of those and other ones too. So, exactly. um, right. And you can go on elenatorciella.com. That's where I, you can see everything that I do. Okay. What was that again? Elena? Torciello.com. That tells me, I'll show you everything that I do, you know. Put that the on car, there for yeah, the car buying. I do a car buying workshop tips. I have that on there uh, where yes. people can get, you know, those workshops and uh, they can so email what me. What made you want to go into, uh, uh, you know, talking about the cars and everything? Can you give us a brief before we end? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> because you went, you know, some people have a way of getting to different things that they want to teach about. Well, this was very interesting, okay? Because what happened was, uh, let's see, I was living in East Windsor at that time, and I decided that I was going to go. Um, I was I I gave up my teaching position. Uh -huh. so I gave up my teaching position, to, right? And I just started to explore different things, okay? Yeah. Uh, and so one of them was. Uh, I went into the car dealership one day. I love cars. I've loved really? them all my life. Do you know how people like have dolls when they're little kids? Yes. I had dump trucks and what? things like that. Yes. Okay. I was a tomboy. All right. And so <laughs> I, I was one, too, actually. <laughs> I had one doll, Chatty Kathy. That was it. I mean, I was not into dolls. All right. So anyway, uh, so what happened was uh, I needed to get, so I said, you know what? I'm going to go and put it. A resume in here at this dealership yes so it was uh yeah so it was a toyota dealership right so the guy said to me because i have a lot of sales experience right with all everything uh -huh. i did and so the guy said to me this he said if you're as good as your resume you could start next week wow. i said i don't know nothing about selling cars but yeah i'll do it and so i did and i was there like four months and then I went to another car dealership. But what I want to tell you was the car dealership, you got to know what you're doing. Yes, you okay. do. When you come in there, you have to be an educated consumer. Yes. Or you're going to get, you're not going to, you're not going to get the deal that you want. Let's put it that way. Right. I believe it. So, yeah. So, so I did, I did. I was selling cars. I sold like 34 cars. Like wow. I guess it wasn't a month. I, and then, and then a lady said to me, "Oh, you should come and sell copiers." I'm like, "I don't know if I want to sell copiers and travel all over." But guess right, what? Right. I left the car dealership and went to sell the copiers. Oh my gosh! And the guy said to me, "I'm saving your desk, the manager, because yeah. you're coming back. You're not going to like selling copiers. You're going to be selling more cars." I said, "Okay, whatever." But from what I learned, I became so astute with the business that I wanted to help other people. And right. that's why I take people to the dealership. I took 20 friends to the dealership and got them their deal. That's your passion. That's my passion. So that's now I'm passion. writing, and I've always wanted to write this manual and now it's almost finished. All we got to do is publish it. Well, that's so, an excellent thing. And I can't wait to get it, you know, cause you, you never know. I can uh, learn yeah. something different. Yeah, every you know, and so, but if you go on elenatorciello.com, I have three workshops. They're ten dollars a piece, okay? okay? And it teaches you part one, part two, and part three. It will teach That's you awesome. from the time you deliver to the time you, uh, from the time you decide to the time you deliver, uh, what to do, what to say. You know, know know about your maintenance department. You have to yes. know about that. Yes. Know, know about what to say while you're in a test drive and not what to say. Okay. Wow. Cause if you really love that car, you don't want to tell them you love that car. So interesting. I, like, you know what I mean? It's like, so, like I said, I've been doing this for a while and I, I love cars. I mean, if I, the other day, what did I see a Maserati? I took a picture of it. I mean, <laughs> I'll stop and get a car. Well, like, what are you doing? Yeah. I got to get the Maserati. Like, like, I like looking at nice cars. I'm not going to lie, but I'm yeah. not into cars, you know, Right, but right, I right. I do like I get you know the fascination with looking at nice cars. I do. Yeah. yeah. So I've been on I've but, been on TV talking about it and podcasts talking about it. Really? So, yeah. It's 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 one of my passions. That's great. That's great, and it's good to hear. You know, especially when it's coming from a woman, because 
Most guys think women don't know what they're talking about when it comes to cars, but we do. <laughs> oh, yeah. But let me let me say this to you. Say, you, just become educated. And that's what yeah. I do. I educate women and men not to get ripped off. I mean, because that's you it. can. And it's a long road because yeah, you, you, know, you got this long loan that you're going to have to pay. Yes. I because agree. Now they're, they're like seven years now. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now what happened is people are upside down. They owe exactly. more than what their car is worth. Yep. That's right. And now you're upside down. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Elena. I thank you for coming on and sharing with us. And um, I well, just look forward. Yes. I thank you. Do you have any final words for us before we end the show? I would just say whatever it is you're dealing with, okay, if it's psychological, if it's emotional, if it's physical, and God, and you got it, I mean, like, you got to deal with it. You got to find a way to be positive about it. Don't look at the negative. Stay on the positive. What can I eat? I'm not worried about what I can't eat, okay? What can I do? What can I do to make my life positive and and really fulfill my life, even though you're going through whatever you're going through um, exactly. medically or emotionally or whatever. I agree. Well, I thank you so much. Yeah. I and wish I could see, I, see me. <laughs> I know. I wish too, but we'll have another chance. We'll have another chance. Yeah. But we I will. thank you all for watching. I thank you for tuning in from the different platforms and I will see you all next week on the 23rd with Denise Coleman, author Denise Coleman. I thank you all so much. And Elena, thank you again. Oh, you're Have welcome. Have a great night. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you.